Welcome everyone to our fourth QA forum of 2023. I'm Dr. Michael Novick, the Director of Education and Associate Director of Quality Assurance for VRAD. Today we'll be discussing some neuro cases, our accreditation statement, and the learning objectives for this forum. Our first patient is a 66-year-old woman presenting with left eye pain and headache. These are axial images from a non-contrast CT scan of the head. And the coronal images from the same study. Let's review the findings on this axial image. The left superior ophthalmic vein is engorged. The finding is nicely delineated on this coronal image. A follow-up contrast enhanced scan was obtained. These are the axial images from that study. Once again, we can appreciate the engorgement of the left superior ophthalmic vein. The presence of intravenous contrast reveals an abnormality in the cavernous sinus that was inconspicuous on the non-contrast images. The cavernous sinus is engorged and distended and demonstrates early enhancement. This constellation of findings is consistent with a carotico cavernous fistula. A few brief words on the subject. Generally speaking, these can be divided into two main categories, direct fistulae and indirect fistulae, with the former reflecting a direct connection between the internal carotid artery and the cavernous sinus. Etiologies for direct fistulae include ruptured aneurysms, trauma, and other vascular causes including dissection and fibromuscular dysplasia. Indirect fistulae involve multiple branches of the internal and or external carotid arteries and are felt to reflect sequelae of underlying cavernous sinus thrombosis. There are also associations with pregnancy and chronic sinusitis. Pulsatile exophthalmos is the most common presenting symptom. Other common symptoms include but are not limited to proptosis, progressive visual loss, and subconjunctival hemorrhage. Management of carotico-cavernous fistulae is driven by the extent and severity of the patient's symptoms. On occasion, these will close on their own, but many patients require endovascular and surgical intervention. This article from the American Journal of Neuroradiology is a good place to start if you're looking for some more information. Our next patient is a 59-year-old woman with a provided clinical history of quote-unquote not herself. 
These are axial images from a CT angiogram of the head. Here are the coronal images from the same study. Let's review our findings. There is marked attenuation of the supraclinoid internal carotid arteries as well as the anterior and middle cerebral arteries with associated web-like or lace-like collateralization. The wispy collateralization is well demonstrated on this coronal image. and there is resultant decreased vascularity in the anterior and middle cerebral artery distributions. So this is a nice example of Moya Moya syndrome. Moya-Moya disease is an idiopathic non-inflammatory progressive vasoocclusive disease. I used the term Moya-Moya syndrome in this case because we don't know the underlying pathology leading to the patient's findings. Again, Moya-Moya disease is chronic and progressive. It most commonly presents in children and young adults. The age distribution for Moya Moya syndrome is much larger owing to the multitude of underlying causes. As you might imagine, patients frequently present with findings of ischemia and or hemorrhage. And the mainstays of treatment include bypassing or recanalizing the occluded segments. This article from the Journal of Computer Assisted Tomography gives a nice overview of both Moya Moya disease and Moya Moya syndrome. Our next patient is a 52 year old woman presenting with headache. Here are the axial images from a non contrast CT scan of the head. the sagittal images for the same patient. And finally, the axial images from a CT angiogram of the head. Returning to this axial image from the non-contrast scan, there are trace prepontine subarachnoid blood products. The finding is very subtle but evident on multiple slices.
it is equally subtle on this sagittal image. And there is yet another subtle finding on the post-contrast images. A small dilated vessel is revealed in the right cerebellopontine angle. So this is a somewhat unsatisfying case of a subtle subarachnoid bleed due to an unknown underlying vascular anomaly. I wanted to show this case because it's basically an eye test and to remind everyone that there's no substitute for being careful and methodical in your approach. Next up is a 15-year-old boy status post-trauma. Neuroradiology cases so often begin with a non-contrast CT scan of the head and so shall we. These are the axial images from that study. Here are the sagittal images from the same study. Let's review the findings on this axial image at approximately the level of the skull base. There is soft tissue prominence and crowding in the foramen magnum. The cause of which is nicely demonstrated on this sagittal image. There are low-lying peg-like cerebellar tonsils. So this is a patient with Chiari-1 malformation. Let's briefly review some of the different types of Chiari malformations. Type 1 is the most common and, as we've just seen, involves protrusion of the cerebellar tonsils through the foramen magnum. In patients with Chiari-2 malformations, the medulla, fourth ventricle, and cerebellar vermis will join the cerebellar tonsils in protruding through the foramen magnum. These patients also commonly have lumbosacral meningocele's. Chiari-3 malformations look very much like Chiari-2 malformations with the addition of an occipital or upper cervical meningocele. Chiari-4 malformations present with severe cerebellar hypoplasia and no protrusion through the foramen magnum. Patients with Chiari-5 malformations have an absent cerebellum and herniation of the occipital lobe through the foramen magnum. So these are the five main types of Chiari malformations. There are two others that I won't discuss here. Frankly, those terms are infrequently used and are not clinically significant in any event. I hope you learned something from this lecture. I certainly learned a lot preparing it for you, and I thank you for coming, and I look forward to seeing you later in the year with some more interesting cases. Thanks again.